We are used to seeing documents laid out in a fairly standard way as you can see on the screen here we've got some text laid out into paragraphs. What I want to show you next is working with columns which will, will allow you to lay the text out in columnar format rather like a newspaper or magazine article. First of all we've got to tell the computer which text to lay out into columns so I'm going to select some of my paragraphs I'll leave the top one undone for now. We can use this icon on the toolbar, the columns, and when we click on to that, we get a little option box there of how many columns to work with. I'll select two, and you can see that the text immediately jumps, just the text that I had selected, but it immediately jumps into two columns. I'll just undo that. That's the quick and easy way. Um, the way that gives us a little bit more control over how things work is by using the format menu and then drop down to columns. We've got the same presets there as we had on the toolbar. We can choose how many columns we want there. We can also use uh, the rollover buttons to choose a different number of columns. I'm just going to select the two column preset and looking further down we can adjust the width of those columns up and down depending on the size of the uh, physical size of the paper that we're using there we can also adjust the spacing between the columns and you notice that any changes you make will show you in the preview window what changes, uh, what, what effect those changes will have. So as I'm reducing the spacing there, you can see the preview window, the spacing gets closer together. The default is to keep those columns equal width, but you can change that by taking the tick out of the equal width, equal column width, and that then allows you to change each column width separately, which will give you the effect of these uh, presets here. I like mine nice and equal though. And then finally on here we can uh, put a line to go between the columns. I like aligning because it just helps um, delineate the text a little bit better. Just before I click on OK, you'll notice that we've got this Apply To box at the bottom and it's on Selected Text. I could change that to the whole document, but I'm going to keep it on Selected Text and then OK. And there's the effect. The text that I selected has been formatted into two columns with a line down the middle. If we want to make changes, we can simply click on the columns and jump straight back into the formatting menu and just make alterations. And it will immediately apply those alterations to, those, to the text they had selected. And then finally, when you're working with columns, sometimes you get a little bit of uneven spacing. Uh, that's looking pretty good as it is at the moment. But just imagine that this paragraph here, I wanted to start at the top of the next paragraph. I can insert a break there and choose a column break, which tells a computer that in this section of columns to put a break there, so that wherever that cursor insertion point was, we'll jump to the top of the next column. So we'll click on OK, and you can see the effect of that. Sometimes it isn't the effect that you're expecting. So remember the Undo tool. But I also want to show you the Show Hide button that we've worked with a few times. When I switch that on, You'll see what happened there when we actually inserted the columns. We got a column break inserted where the cursor insertion point was. So I can just delete that in the normal way. And it puts things back to how we were. You'll notice here and here these dotted lines. We'll come back to these in a later video. But basically, the computer sets up... Um, a section break and a section break is a 
you can have lots of sections within a document with different formatting within those sections. We'll talk more about that at a later date, but that's what's happened. It's created a section break for us.